Hello there. I just wanted to do a quick run through of Xena Brigade. Um, it uh, went into pre order um, today. The physical release is pending, and you can reserve your copy on the Bitmap Soft website, and I'll put a link in um, in the video description. Uh, Xena Brigade is a turn based strategy game, and for those people who have played the likes of Rebel Star or Laser Squad, you'll be pretty familiar with the mechanics of this one. Um, the premise is that the Xeno Hordes, long believed extinct, have returned to ravage the galaxy once more, and disbanded after the Great Bio Wars almost 25 years ago, the Galactic Government rapidly assembles brigades of veteran soldiers to take the war to the enemy. So, there are six maps in the game, and each each side takes it in turns to move uh, and attack and each map has different objectives now you can play in one or two player so one player is against the computer and then two player you take it in turns on the same next and typically one of you would go out of the room while the other one takes their turn the main menu here, uh, we navigate with WS and return. We can change the number of players. We can change the control system between keyboard, mouse and joystick or joypad. Uh, we can change the difficulty level, although I have to say normal I found to be quite difficult. <laughs> and then we can select our levels here and it gives us a brief overview of what we need to do for that level. So the tutorial level is a good dropping in point, um, even if you have played Rebel Star and Laser Squad extensively. It's worth just doing this to get a feel for the mechanics and what all the different controls and, and icons actually do. Uh, so on this level, access the Imperial Simulation computer in order to become familiar with the controls. The four fuel drums must be destroyed using weapons found in the base. Blast doors can be destroyed if required. Do not loiter. Okay. So I'm just going to move up to start the game. And I have to just say at this point that I am using a pre-release version of the game. Um, this isn't the final, although it's pretty damn close to being the final. Now, it's showing us a map, an overview of this tutorial level. And we can see here in this green box, this is the zone, the room that we can deploy our troops into. And then at the top here, we can see the four fuel drums that we need to destroy. So I'm just gonna click, press any key or click. And we can see here the deployment zones and the squares that I can deploy my units onto, uh, represented by B. And I can move my mouse pointer to the extents of the screen and click, and then it will allow me to scroll around and see what's going on. I can also see the X's here, and these are the Xeno deployment zones. So I can see uh, on, the, on the various maps where the Xenos will first appear. Okay. So the deployment phase doesn't let you do an awful lot except choose where you're going to put your units. So I'm going to put one here and I'm going to put one here. Okay, deployment is now complete. I can't do anything at this point. Um, I have no movement points um, because this is purely deployment. And in order to start the game, you have to end your turn. Uh, so I shall do that now and then I'll go through some of the interface elements. Okay. So there are keyboard equivalents to all of these icons on the right um, and I shall just give a brief overview of what they do. So starting here we are rotating our character, we are moving them forwards in whichever direction they are currently facing, we are rotating them right, we are making them sidestep to the left, we are making them walk backwards and we are making them sidestep to the right. Okay. That's easy enough. Then we have pick up object that they have to be standing over in order to pick up. 
we have fire mode, which allows us to shoot, assuming that we have a weapon equipped. And then we have drop object, so drop whatever object we are currently holding and is active. We have open and closed doors. We have next character, which allows us to move between the various units that we have. And then we have this one here, which is to load ammunition. So if we have a weapon and we have the correct ammunition, that will load it. Also, if the weapon jams, which can happen on more difficult levels uh, or higher level of difficulty, then that is also used to clear the jam. Okay. And we also have this, which is the scanner, which we just showed before. There is actually a scanner item that you can get in the game and it extends the functionality really of what you can see here by virtue that it will show you where the enemies are as well. So if you've got one of those equipped on one of your units, it's quite useful to use. Here we have the inventory. So we can see that this guy has nothing. So the first thing that we need to do is to find a weapon. This guy as well. Trooper Curthers has nothing. So what we want to do, if we deselect the character with a right click, it then allows us to scroll around. And if we select a tile, it will tell us what that tile is. So I'm selecting an empty tile here. Can be destroyed, no, explodes, no, etc., etc. And it tells us it's floor. Okay, great. However, this one here says it's floor, but there is a pistol there. And then this one here tells us a pistol clip. Okay. If we move up to the fuel drums as well, we can click on those and it tells us it's a fuel drum and it tells us it can be destroyed and it will explode. So you can click on anything really in the game and it'll tell you what it is. You don't see these items though until you've actually started the game. So initially when you look at the, the map when you know before you deploy, you don't see where the weapons and such are going to be. So what I need to do is I need to move my troops into these rooms in order to pick up the pistol, the clip, and then to load them. Now, down here we have stamina, we have movement points, we have armor, we have weight, and we have ammunition. So we have a weight of zero at the moment, we have 20 movement points, and those movement points will reduce as we start to move, as we start to rotate our character, and as we start to move them forwards and backwards, etc. So what I'm going to do with this guy is I'm going to rotate him. This arrow here shows us that he's currently facing down. If you were ever unsure as to which direction your character was facing. So I'm going to rotate him around and make him point straight up. I'm going to walk him forwards. Those rotations have taken one movement point each. And then when I walk forwards, that takes two movement points. And if I move diagonally, that takes three movement points. Okay, so I'm now at the door and I can attempt to open it with this, but the chances are I've not got any movement points. So I'm going to switch to the other unit here, Trooper Chan, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing with him. I'm going to rotate him around. I'm going to walk him up here and rotate him and get him close to the door and open it. Okay, so he's slightly better off. He has uh, more movement points, but he doesn't have any left to actually move forward because it would take two. So both troopers are now spent and I need to end my turn. And this is obviously the reason it's called turn-based strategy because you each get a turn, you each have a finite number of points to use in movement and, and firing, etc. Uh, and then it's the next person's turn. So I'm just going to move Trooper Curthers, um, open the door, and then I'm going to move him into the room, and I'm going to attempt to pick up the pistol and the clip, but I'm probably not going to be able to do it in this turn. So I'm going to use the pickup and then I'm going to rotate him round and then move him and then pick up 
Okay, so that worked. I had enough points to do all that. If I look in his inventory now, I have a pistol and a pistol clip. And if I select the pistol and I select the load icon, there you go. That is now loaded. We have ammo of 10. Um, looking in his inventory, the pistol clip is gone and we now have a pistol with 10 rounds. Weight has gone up. So that is encumbering him slightly. So that reduces his ability to move. So now he needs to come out of the room. Uh, we have no movement points left. So now we're gonna switch to the other units. So Trooper Chan, I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna move him over the pistol, pick it up, and then move down over the clip, pick that up, and then I'm going to select the pistol and load. You have to remember to do this because it's no use being in a firefight and suddenly realizing that you've not loaded anything or you've forgotten to pick up the ammo or, or whatever. So I'm gonna rotate him around and head towards the door. And that's it. That is my turn gone. I've got no movement points left. So I'm gonna end the turn again. And here we go. So I need to get these units up to the fuel drums. Um, I'll give them two fuel drums each to destroy. And I have to get through this here. So this is a blast door, can be destroyed, yes. Um, I'm not sure if I can open it, but I think I'll just shoot it uh, when I get close to it. So I'm gonna start moving the unit towards the door and I'm gonna get him fairly close to it because pistols are not that accurate. I'm gonna do the same thing with Trooper Chat. And then at the next turn, we'll have a look at how you actually fire. Okay. Okay. So this icon here controls the firing. Um, we target that thing that we want to shoot and we're presented with some options here. For shooting in this way, we use either a snap or an aim. Um, a snap is slightly less accurate than an aim. But as you can see, an aim will use 22 points and a snap will use 11. So it's possible that some units don't have enough action points or sorry, movement points to do an, an aim shot. So with a pistol, your accuracy can be fairly bad um, at distance. So you, you want to get close up to things. Uh, and you'd expect a big door like that, you know, you'd be able to hit, but sometimes, sometimes you could actually miss. So I've shot that door open and now I can move Trooper Curvers through, heading towards the fuel drums. He's only got one movement point left. So I'm then gonna switch to Trooper Chan and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. He's got 22 movement points. I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna do a snap. Okay, so that is now open and we're gonna move him through. So that is it, he has one movement point left. Trooper Curthus has one movement point left, so I'm going to end the turn on that. So this is really just to familiarize yourself with the mechanics and movements and loading and such before things get really heavy with lots of enemies running around um, trying to kill you. The tutorial level doesn't show you a lot of things which exist on the map. Um, there are things like uh, vending machines, for example, um, there are key cards that you have to collect in order to open certain doors to, to rescue someone or, or to complete the objective. Um, you'll find weapons scattered around, you know, assault rifles and rocket launchers and explosives and things uh, that you can then equip. Uh, so the tutorial level doesn't have a lot of things that you will find in, a, in, in one of the regular levels. Um, you know, there's more variety, but there's also more bad things coming at you. Anyway. Trooper Curthers. So he's going to take out a couple of these. Um, I want to get him closer to them because, as I mentioned, the pistol accuracy is not that great. Um, he's got 20 movement points and it takes him. Poof, what 
snaps it's taken. It takes an 11 to do a snap. So I could try getting close enough. But I, I honestly think he'd miss from there with a pistol. So I'm just going to walk him closer. Um, and then I'm going to attack that fuel drum on his next turn because it, it doesn't really have enough. So I'm going to switch over to Trooper Chan and I'm going to move him closer. Um, I'm going to take a shot at this actually. So I'm going to select fire and then I'm going to snap and see what happens. And there we go. He hit it. My God. So we want to then get him in some kind of position, move him towards this next fuel drum. Um, he has no movement points left and Kerthus doesn't have enough movement points to actually shoot. So we're going to end the turn there. The reason that the level description tells you not to dawdle is because after a certain number of turns, Xeno start to spawn. So that's that. you, you want to get things done quickly if you, if you want to avoid that because you know, two guys with pistols aren't an awful lot. So here we go with Kerthus. I'm going to shoot this fuel drum here. I'm going to use a snapshot. There we go. And then he won't have enough to shoot this one. I need to get closer to it anyway. So I've lined him up, ready. And then Trooper Chan, I'm going to move him forwards a little bit just to make sure he doesn't miss, although he probably will. Nice one. So he's taken out the two on his side, and we're just left with this one now. And I'm going to have to wait till the next turn. I hope the Xenos don't spawn yet. Okay. So here will endeth the mission, hopefully, if I hit it. Only just. <laughs> uh, so that is it, basically. Uh, as I mentioned, I mean, it is designed just to get you familiar with the interface and what, what all the different functions do and just you know, clicking on things to see what they are, um, Entombed Marine, um, and stuff, you know. So I have completed the objective there. I've got nothing else to do. I'm going to end the turn. Xenos do their thing. And that's it. Game over. The Brigade have won. Press any key. So that is it in a nutshell. Um, as I say, there's lots more to it. If you, if you select... Um, one of the other levels, for example, Moonbase Molden. Okay, so as you can see with this one, there's a lot more to it. And we can see the deployment areas for us here. And we're going to have far more units as well. Um, so I can pop around this level and I can see we've got fuel drums, we've got these drop ships, um, we've got items which we can use as and there's a vending machine it doesn't let you select it yet because you haven't done you haven't done your deployments um, but it's a good idea to have a look around because this is a rescue mission this one and um, the guy I think is here in this room this room is locked um, and you need to get a key oh, it's probably that room actually I can't remember um, yeah, so you need to obtain a key card. And you can see as well where all the Xenos are going to, to go. So the, the objective of this one is really to rescue the guy and then get out. So you have to get a key card, get to the guy, escort him out without getting killed, and then take him to the exit. Uh, and then we have assault rifles and the like, you know, which is you know far better, far more interesting weapons. Um, so yeah, I was just going to have a quick wander around this map. And we can see the Xeno's movement. So this is the guy we have to rescue, Sergeant Kerders. Um, but if we have a look around, you can set yourselves objectives based on, on the things, the objects in the level. Titanium armor, um, med kit, access card. So probably the access card you need to rescue the guy. Um, chock bar, you know. Gives you a bit of a boost. Android patch, because a couple of your units are actually androids. The ones with the assault rifles. And we've got pistol clips. 
Um, and yeah, if you if you have a wander around the map, you'll probably find other things as well to pick up. Um, so I didn't want to go into too much detail with this. I just wanted to give kind of an overall view. Um, and that's it. Thanks for listening.